Welcome back to Black News Tonight. At least 19 people killed and dozens more injured after drone attacks in Ethiopia as we continue to shed light on the black world with some of the top stories from across the diaspora. In the drone attack yesterday, reports say at least two people were killed and dozens were injured in Hewain, which is south of Tigray's capital, Mekele. Reports say the drone strike on Monday in the town of Maid Zebri killed at least 17 people, mostly women. That attack happened on the same day that President Joe Biden was on a call with Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed. The White House has since released a readout of the call in which Biden, quote, expressed concern that the ongoing hostilities, including recent airstrikes, continue to cause civilian casualties and suffering. Biden also pledged the U.S. will continue to, quote, work alongside the African Union and regional partners to help Ethiopians peacefully resolve the conflict. Over in neighboring Somalia, a car bomb explosion has rocked the capital of Mogadishu. The group called Ashabab has claimed responsibility for the car bomb that went off near the main international airport, the explosion killing multiple people, including the head of Mogadishu's ambulance services, as Ashabab claims it was aiming for, quote, foreign officers. The United Nations posted a tweet to deny workers that UN, to, to deny reports that UN workers were harmed in the attack. The UN tweet reads, contrary to some initial reports, there were no UN personnel or contractors in the convoy targeted in the suicide attack earlier today in Mogadishu. Meanwhile, Somalia is finding backing from its regional partners in Kenya and Uganda, as both nations join the growing number of countries supporting the East African nation's updated timeline of February 25th for completion of parliamentary polls. We now turn to Somaliland, as history will soon be made. The Somali Dispatch reports that President Musa Bihi Abdi is scheduled to pay his first ever visit to the United States in March of this year, according to Somaliland Foreign Minister Dr. Issa Kade Mohammed. Dr. Saad Ali Shire, the Republic's Minister of Finance, joined me on the show back in August of last year to break down some of the demands of the autonomous region within Somalia. Here's what he said. Well, we want to be a full member of the international community and uh, you know get all the rights and the privileges and the benefits of being a full member uh, at the present time lack of recognition is a problem is problematic uh you know we cannot uh, travel it's, it's difficult for us to travel we can travel but it's difficult to, uh, to travel uh, it's difficult to attract investment into the country it's difficult to access you know international finance it's difficult to access even aid so we have a lot of uh, a lot of difficulties you know in the states of not being recognized. Over in the Caribbean, authorities in the Dominican Republic have captured another suspect in Haitian President Jovenel Moise's assassination. Officials have detained the convicted drug trafficker, who is also a DEA informant, as he now becomes another murder suspect arrested in connection to the mercenary group officials claim assassinated Moise. The New York Times also reports Haitian Prime Minister Ariel Henry who took his contested post after the killing of Moise, reportedly kept in close contact with another wanted prime suspect, days after Moise's murder. And on a lighter note, we'd like to congratulate referee Natalie Simon, who has become the first black woman to receive a FIFA badge. The LA Times reports that FIFA, soccer's largest governing body, is adding Simon, who is also Native American, to an international pool of match referees, which is the highest honor officials can earn. With the clearance from FIFA, Simon is allowed to participate as a referee in international games and tournaments.